If you're just joining us, we are just finishing up listening to a press conference at Central Michigan University after two people were shot and killed on the school grounds inside of a campus in uh, inside of one of the dorms at Campbell Hall. Here's what we know. No students, faculty or staff were injured, but the gunfire did happen around nine o'clock this morning. Right now, police are looking for a 19 year old suspect who is still on the loose. His name is James Davis, and we do expect for them to release a photo of him at some point today. He is to be considered armed and dangerous and they do believe that he is in the city. Now there was an incident that happened yesterday where police were called to get in contact with him. He had to be taken to the hospital for some sort of drug related issue. Now we're told that this shooting was over a domestic altercation and the university has sent out messages to the student body informing them that they need to take shelter. Local force Sean Lay joining us live now from outside of one of the apartments that's been surrounded by police ever since the shooting happened. Sean, have you gotten a chance to speak with students? Students, what are they saying right now? Students, uh, law enforcement, and university officials, as well as our law enforcement sources on the federal, state, and local levels. So everything we're going to talk about and show you right now is confirmed information. Let's let everyone know where we are. West Campus in Verner is the corner we're standing on here near Bellows, near the Polo Village Apartments. Let me show you what's happening here because what you can see... Well, you can, well, let's come back here, guys, live. Let's come back to our live shot, guys, live, because what we're going to do is show you what's unfolding right in front of us here. So, Aaron, let me know when that shot is back up so we can un let everyone know what's happening. Okay, here, we're back here. So on the corner, you heard during the briefing about clothing being left along the railroad tracks. That's this area right here, just outside the Northwest Apartments. You've got Central Michigan Police, uh, Tribal Police from nearby, and uh, MSU Police closing down the tracks and also closing off this area. This is the Northwest part of campus. Joel, if you come over this way, one half mile this way on campus, Campbell Hall. That's where the shooting took place and that suspected shooter, James Eric Davis Jr., allegedly tracked this way on the tracks. And if you see the MSP helicopter there, it has been flying there for about 45 minutes right over uh, different uh, off-campus apartment buildings there. Now we can show you the new video just into Local 4 to show you just how intense the search is in that area with police officers with their firearms drawn going car to car, checking every car off campus, also checking every single car. And there are thousands of them here at CMU and all the different on and off campus parking lots, checking them for uh, the suspect perhaps hiding in one of those cars. So far, no dice. They have not been able to find uh, this suspect, James Eric Davis. A junior, African American, 19 years of age, 5'10, 135 pounds. He was wearing a mustard colored jeans and a blue sweatshirt. But again, some articles of clothing found where we are right here near the railroad tracks. The shelter in place continues for the students here. Many of them from right uh, at home in Metro Detroit were in touch with them and their parents. Uh, a couple of students uh, talking about the shelter in place and what happened, talking about uh, just a few minutes ago. Let's listen to the students now. There had been probably five or six uh, police officers walking around with assault rifles and uh, and a, a, a investigation dog, and I had seen them run into the wooded area right next to the police tracks. Um, and there's there's been a helicopter that's been hovering over our building for probably close to 30 or 40 minutes. So um, right now we have like the doors locked and like the blinds closed, and um, we're hearing helicopters because there were reports that he ran north of campus into our area. So, um, yeah, we're, we're just hearing helicopters and sirens, and um, it's like the helicopter keeps circling because it keeps getting louder and quieter and louder and quieter. So it's definitely surreal that he's probably near, like, our house. Back here live, you heard that student telling us about the north side of campus and northwest side of campus. That's where most of the manhunt is happening right here by the railroad tracks behind us. We also heard from another grandfather in Metro Detroit. He's in touch with his grandson, who is the roommate of the shooter, saying that the shooting happened right 
in front of his grandson. That grandson has calmed down and is relaying everything he knows to the police that are investigating this situation. Again, a Metro Detroit student uh, was a witness to all this when his roommate came home and fired those shots in what's being called a domestic incident. Again, what the CMU has put out, put out right away accurately is that no students, faculty, or staff injured in this awful shooting, but two people very close to that uh, student, uh, James Eric Davis, uh, the ones that were unfortunately shot and killed on campus. On our way to Mount Pleasant, uh, the town, the very various businesses in town, and there are a lot of them on lockdown right now. In fact, people running a subway had their doors locked up, saying that the city manager of Mount Pleasant came by, was going business to business, asking them to lock their doors until the all clear could be given, until this gunman has been located. And again, the gunman has not been located at this time. Uh, what we are seeing is that there is a sense of a quiet and a sense that people are taking this in a very calm, reasonable way, staying in. You've got more of Apartments over here, people staying in place, people, uh, the university and uh, university student government asking people to close their windows and close their blinds also for safety. We're seeing everyone cooperating with that in a very calm, reasonable way as that manhunt continues right behind us. Evrod, back to you right now. All righty, Sean Lay reporting live from Central Michigan University's campus. We're going to continue to keep you updated with the very latest in this story as new details continue to come into the local four newsroom. We'll have that for you online at clickondetroit.com. We come back breaking news from Wayne State University's campus. An accident there. We'll have a live report. A disability. Welcome back, everyone. We want to get to breaking news that we're following from Wayne State University's campus. Three people are in serious condition after a car loses control and slams into a bus stop. Local force Coco McAvoy is out live on Woodward and Forest Avenues right near the campus there. Coco, what is the latest? Good afternoon, Evra. We want to get you caught up to speed on what's happening here at Woodward and Forest. This is still an active scene. Police officers are out here, and as you're looking at right now, there's a crew here handling what's left of the bus stop after this crash. As you mentioned, three people were rushed to the hospital following the crash here this morning. It happened at around 1045 in the morning. We know a 78 year old man, a Detroit resident, is the man who was responsible for this crash. He actually lost control of his vehicle here this morning and then and slammed into the bus stop. Now, this is a very busy area here in Wayne State University's campus, and we actually went across the street here to the Shell gas station to get surveillance video. We want to take a look at that right now. You can see the surveillance video shows the moment of impact. You can see in that video that the car loses control, swerves, jumps the curb here, and then runs into this bus stop. At last check, the three people who were hit were in temporary serious condition. We are told they are also stable, though, this morning. That's the great news out of this. But we also spoke to witnesses at the scene. Take a listen. Went into it was like a movie, like the, the special effects in a movie. It was shattering. Yeah, but it looks like the guy, um, he said he looked like he fell asleep and he just slid over into the bus stop. So it looks like two people were injured, but it was three people in the bus stop and an ambulance had to come get them out. And you heard the one witness say that the driver might have fallen asleep, but actually a few minutes before we got on air with you, we spoke with the 78 year old driver, the man behind the wheel, and he tells us a different story. And we're going to have that story for you at five o'clock in the afternoon. But we're also going to continue to check on the victim's conditions and bring you more information on air and online. Back to you. All righty, Coco, thank you for the update there. We're getting even more breaking news just into the local four newsroom right now. Literally just getting this photo. If you want to take a close look at it, this is James Eric Davis Jr. He is the suspect that police are looking for right now, wanted for shooting and killing two people on Central Michigan University's campus. There is a close photo of him. We're also going to have this for you on our website. Click on Detroit.com as police are continuing to search for him. He is considered armed and dangerous. Now let's get a check your forecast with meteorologist Brandon and Rue. All right, just a quick little look at some of the totals, some of the higher snow totals from yesterday. Wixom and White Lake, both eight and a half inches. Brighton, eight inches, almost eight inches in Ann Arbor. Metro Airport, Romulus, five inches yesterday. Some of the lower snow totals, Dearborn and Dundee, two, three inches, 3.1 in Lapeer, Shelby Township, 
5.1 inches. So a lot of us were in that three to five range closer to downtown, starting to see a little sun breaking through these stubborn clouds. North winds driving clouds down from Lake Huron and low and middle 30s with wind chills in the 20s right now. But that sun is going to become more and more part of our afternoon 40 degrees, but still breezy. So feeling colder, a little sun and near 40 degree temps. We're going to get some melting today and then refreezing overnight. Saturday morning low will be down to about 23 degrees. Here's a look at the cloud cover again, just pouring down from north to south, but we sort of split the uprights here. Strong nor'easter with rain, snow and wind out east and rain and snow out west as well. Not a whole lot going on in between, which means good things for us as we head into the weekend. The model has next to nothing. We're going to be cool in the mornings through the weekend, and that could mean just a little spotty ice on the roads. Be careful, but plenty of sunshine for the weekend. 41 Saturday, Sunday, 44 degrees. Nice uh, Monday. Uh, will be uh, 43 degrees again. And then what will be potentially a weather changer weather maker on Tuesday? I don't think this is a big storm, but is a wintry mix. I think Tuesday morning snow. This is several days out, so work with me, but snow in the morning a little rain snow mix and then back to snow Tuesday night and Wednesday morning and Evrod that means heading into the latter half of next week a taste of winter once again. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. Before we go, we do want to show you the photo of the man police are looking for again. This is James Eric Davis Jr. He's 19 years old and he is the main suspect after two people were shot and killed inside of a dorm, Campbell dorm on Central Michigan University's campus. Right now, police are considering this man to be armed and dangerous. The entire city is on lockdown. That would include elementary schools, businesses, city buildings, as well as adult care facilities. Again, this is James Eric Davis Jr. Junior. We're going to have much more on this story coming up on Local 4 News at noon. And in the meantime, you can also go to clickondetroit.com where we're continuing to keep this story updated for you. We have learned that the school is a gun free campus. There's no word yet on exactly why or how he brought this gun to the school's campus allegedly. But again, police are still actively looking for him right now, and he is considered armed and dangerous. We've got another photo of this suspect, a closer look at him on our website. You can go to clickondetroit.com for that, and we'll continue to keep you updated on this story right here on Local 4. We'll see you later tonight for Local 4 News First at 4.